Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. Well, after the short break last week for basketball, we're back on stream. And we have that man here tonight, the Lord Blakey, one of the living legends in Calypso, Carlton Joseph. And Lord Blakey, sir. welcome to Calypso Showcase. Thank you very much, sir. Where did you get the name Lord Blakey? Well, I was a shoemaker. And Blakey, they have, have a tool in, sh in shoemaker they call a Blakey. So uh, I used to make my shoes on this, this Blakey thing. So that stick on to me. Lord Blakey. Yes, Blakey stick on to me. So when I get in Calypso, I only put add on the law to it. <laughs> At one time, people used to call you the warlord. What, what brought that up? No, it's <coughs> uh, presently now I'm the warlord. No, I they say I'm a miserable felon in Calypso, you know. I, I look for argument all the time. <laughs> so they call me the warlord in Calypso because as a Calypso, you know, you're looking for argument all the time. And what's the Lord Blakey, the yeah. warlord, doing <laughs> in the year 1992 as far as Calypso is concerned? Well, what I did, I only went to the Calypso tent, I went to all everyone. Every one of the Calypso tent. I went and listened. What I like to uh, take in. I will talk a little bit later about your assessment of the Calypso season for okay. 92 and maybe <clears throat> what you have in store for 93. But we know there are a lot of fans out there who want to go down memory lane, especially some of the older viewers. And for some of the young ones, let me tell you, you're going to look at some vintage Calypso from a master at the art, the Lord Blakey, as we take this in. Calypso Showcase, journey to the Roosevelt Barber and Saloon on Duke Street between Charlotte and Henry Street to find the Lord Blakey, Carlton Joseph. Coming in the door, I saw such veterans as the Terror, Nap Hepburn, Pancho, Sputnik, and I understand a lot of Calypsonians frequent this joint. A very favorite barber and saloon of the Calypsonians. Blakey, a pleasure and a privilege to be chatting with you today. Thanks very much, sir. It's a pleasure to, to meet you the same way. You know, from since I was a kid, I, I, the, the, the name Lord Blakey means a lot to me in terms of the Calypso and the Calypso world and watching you work on a stage. Never believed that the day would come when I'd actually be able to interview you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, question number one, when did it all begin for you? It began in 1954 when I sang Steel Band Clash. An immortal hit. Tell us, what gave you the inspiration to write that Calypso? Well, I was a member of the same Tokyo Steel Band. At that time, they called it Destination Tokyo. And the clash took place in Park Street. That, that year, Destination Tokyo plays sledgemen. I was one of the sledgemen. And invaders was coming up Park Street. And Tokyo was coming down. If you listen to the Calypso, you can see the same thing I'm saying in it. So I ain't shift no way. It was a bacchanal, 1950 carnival. Fight was so, with invaders and Tokyo. My friend run and left his hat When they hit him a baseball bat Never me again To jump in a steel pan in Borders Day hey! da, 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 da. Invaders beating sweet, uh -huh. coming up Park Street, uh -huh. Tokyo, coming down beating very slow. And friends, when the two band clash, Mama, you, if you see cut lash, never me again to jump in a steel band in Borders Bay. And bottles had to come from one steel band to the next. So they keep, invaders keep throwing bottles in Tokyo. And Tokyo keep throwing back bottles 
in invaders and I ran so help me go to run smoking a run like hell and end up on a lady bed and they were get me head busting bottles start felting uh -huh. if you see sleds passing uh -huh. husband and wife look they start running for the life a Indian man selling bread Shout out, lad, today you dead Never me again To jump in a steel bag in Father's bed Hot. Uh -huh. If you see men get caught, uh -huh. Lord Blakey run in a house by a lady. Quite on top the lady bed, the pelt a bottle and bust me head. Never me again to jump in a steel burning for the spin. Now, that steel band clash actually took place four years before that in 1950. Why did you wait so long to put it together in song? Well, um, what happened, what made me get across to that? I got three years at Youth Training Center, which is YTC. Youth Training Center at Golden Grove. And when I reached there to, to do my, my time, I was relaxed. So, so I end up making the television. I take it, therefore, you had a, a turbulent childhood. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, you made it all the way to the finals in the very first year of your Calypso career with that tune. That's right. Relive that night for us. Boy, it was something else. That night, well, that time, the, the, the Guardian used to run the competition at the Savannah. And they used to have the audition in a place they call Guardian Sport Club. That is the same place on Rising Road. What do they call it now? I don't know what they call it, but the Guardian newspapers used to run that competition in the Savannah. And I went down there myself. I met Christo there. This is Lord Melody. This is Christo. I read where you were the favorite to win that year, but Lord Melody with second spring won the competition. What happened when the results were announced? No harass to me. <laughs> it wasn't no harass to me. But I know I was doing the right thing. What happened to your Calypso career after that? Because I think 56, 57, and... 50 55 a song. A song named Lipstick Sakagil. Mm -hmm. And 56, I didn't sing. 57, I didn't sing. But Melody get on the papers and say what I sang in 54 was a fluke. So I saw him, I came back in. 1958. 58. And sing too much more. And that is one of uh, the sweetest calypsos you've ever sung. I don't think we have any record of it, and I would like you to give me a little taste of too much smut. Every, every day, my neighbor complaining, but Sparrow and his smut, the calypso singing. It's a disgrace to hear Sparrow singing, and my brothers and sisters, them listening. My mother run and hold my sister by she throat. When she heard that singing John Float and the goat, only let she go and come inside the guild start to sing the family size. Sparrow alone is not to be blamed. Is the committee and judges give him his fame? Was Marty Jean and Dinah he sing when they crown him to need that caliph to Ah, a gem, a gem. Of course, a gem, a gem. That is 1958. Right. And 1959, back in the savannah again and ready for them. Tell us about 1959. I can't remember so much about 1959. I can't remember so much about it. But well, 1959 is the year you sang two tunes, Bring Back the Queen and um, the man, Manners Make It Man, not the clothes. Can you recall those two tunes? Yes, I could remember. Um, I could remember one of the two now. Craig. That, that is song with Craig Arm. Oh, Lord. 
you know these tunes them you know it, so long. we'll come back to it if you recall it but um that was it. those are the two tunes that you sang in that year that took you all the way to the finals right and you ran second to the mighty striker that's right that same year yes because striker run came king for both years for two years the first year they raised the money striker win the second year they raised the money again striker win again yeah, Striker had a hot tune in 59, Bandy Hula Hoop, and that was on, you know, everybody's lips. What do you think? You could remember? No, I can't remember the year following year. Um, I think it was um, a P&M song. Yeah. Um, right. Good, good. It's yeah? a P&M song. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what woman lost her man, she going to complain to Dr. William. Right. Even again. Don't blame the P&M. Don't blame the P&M. That's what it's all. That was the song. Yeah. And he went in both ears, both ears, one behind the next. Well, I show the next tune. That you sang in 1960, you will remember the Arabian festival. Yes, I could remember that. And people always wonder how That's you put those. Um, yeah, no calypso in the world, or no singer in the world could learn that, you know. Well, I want to hear you do it for me, because I wanted, always wanted to see you sing this calypso close up. This guy's gonna call myself at Mustafa. Went to a rap festival in Arabia. And this guy's gonna call myself at Mustafa. Went to a rap festival in Arabia. For your better information, if you want to know, I was the Calypsonian they picked to go, but I couldn't speak the language, so I ain't rude. But alone on the way how to speak for food was give me some kit bila ham and michi. Horra fana haki santa buri, rakata after hatan mamaduki, the men you kill Abdullah. <laughs> Nobody can sing that. I alone could sing that. Now, next, a second Calypso and could sing that like me. Because I. Is, now, if, if I give a joke, I don't know what I'm saying, you know. But I just put words together in my way. So I practice that. So I know nobody can sing that like me. No, I, I understand that here too, that um, some people didn't want you to sing that in the final. They, you had a tune also, they, they docked me to sing that. But then um, the chairman at the CDC was Mr. Ronnie Williams. And he wanted me was to sing a song on this is Dr. William. And I end up singing that song. And from the time I start the song, I realized that the audience didn't want that. They wanted to hear me sing the Arabian. Because them and all could not understand why I sing. But I know why I know why I was saying. Because I talk in Arabian and it's only me alone know, know what I'm saying. Right. And when I, they come and ask me, you know what you're saying? I say no. But I know what I'm saying in the Calypso. Because I understand what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying in the Calypso. But put it to me and ask me about this word and that word and that word. I, uh, oh, you had a, a special way you used to put things together in a comical way that, and you would explain it in the fourth verse. Right. I remember the, the, um, the one about the Chinese in the accident. You could tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Um, I will sing a verse, a line for you so you will understand what I say. He's a tiny man truck and a Negro man make a collision. But the two truck squeeze a car which was driven by a woman. Well, friends, I love to bad until a Negro insane. When the magistrate called the Chinese man to explain, he said, my lolly, corny up, he lolly. Corny tongue, it too lolly, pongy lady, lying for Ellie Potty, the magistrate, Mistress Kafu, tell the Chinese, hush your tail. If you utter another word, young man, I send you straight to the jail. <laughs> I'm sorry all you didn't day. When he wife say, husband, to hear what the Chinese say. But the prosecutor self, like if he went out the brain. The magistrate passed an order, but he asked the Chinese again. The Chinese say, my lolly, corny up, he lolly, corny tongue, he too lolly, bongy lady, lying for. Ellie body, but he lolly, jumps he behind and puts he lay he got down. On my lolly, so please tell me 
Hoopla, Tilo, Limolong, what the man is saying. He says, my lorry coming up. He lorry coming down. The, the two lorry comes the lady right in front, everybody. But his lorry jams she behind and puts the lady cap down. On his lorry, so please tell he who blasted the lorry more wrong. Now, there are two features that are characteristic of the Blakey. One is your laugh, which um, once we hear that laugh, we know it's Blakey going to sing. And the other is the stick or the straw in your hand. Now, here, what happened? If I'm in the Calypso tent, if I'm singing in a Calypso tent, I use a switch, which is a, 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 um, a antenna from a car, shine sometimes. But if I have any way to go and sing, I, I, and I can't get no switch, I use a straw. Now this is to make a novella short and my hand short, so this is an extra link to draw the audience to me. That they go understand what I am saying. <laughs> you understand that kind of way? So I use that extra thing. For that purpose? For that purpose. But then the laugh now I'm making fun all the time. <laughs> now 1962 was Blakey's year. Maria. Maria. <laughs> but that's my back. And uh, you know, hear what happened. During the year 1962, I was singing that song because that year Sparrow went away in the Calypso season. And he tell the management, which is Mr. Seal Taylor, he's a deceased now, he did, that look, the only person who could fill this spot for me is Blakey. I was singing in the next tent. And they brought me across. And I end up singing that song. Maria. Oh. I was playing a boss, but look at me cross. Friends, this thing reached so far. Man, quiet in the south, I'm still in a doubt. I pick up with Maria. Introduce her to me, darling. That's Lord Blakey. Oh, what a lovely face. She put on the angel smile on me, and that was the case of me falling. Maria, girl, I love you so bad. Maria, if you leave me now, we'll be on. I don't know what makes me love so, but she catch me sweet. What, what she gave me to rub, I eat. <laughs> what gave you the, the inspiration, the idea for, for to no. sing this song? Hear what happened? I, I was on a waiting trial in, in um, Golden Grove. Golden Grove. And then they bring me down here at Royal Jail. And I in a cell by myself. So I wanted something to do. So the only, th I always make calypsos, you know, make tune and all of these things. So I do my own thing. I make all my calypsos. And uh, inspiration come to me that I like so much girl and things. <laughs> so that figure to me, but I have a tune for it. I have a tune and I have no words. So I end up making this tune. I don't know what to say, a boiling dung every day. She doing me what she likes. I can't catch me breath, I frightened to death. You could ask me, neighbor Mike. It have a thing she does do, I can't tell it to you because plenty people gonna cry. And yet still it have some deceitful one in here will say that Lord Becky lie. Left me boiling, Maria. Yeah, I love you so bad. Maria, if you leave me, no, will be hard. She's somewhere hiding in the back. There, as I finish sing and get me money to take everything. It's important for a Calypsonian that he composes his own material? I think so. This is why I'm in love with fellas like Kitchener, Shadow, Stalin. I have my own way. 
Mm. You understand? These are the fellas I take on to it. I take on to them. But these fellas like not a bull them. It's my personal friend. I I know them from a long time. We stay together, show me love, I show them back. I used to have a healthy rivalry with Sparrow in the tent. I remember when Sparrow came back, as it were, after you got into his tent. It used to be war in the second half with you and Sparrow. I remember the year with Hold the Pussy, the well, you, you had the crowd going. And he didn't want me to sing it. <laughs> the manager, which is this is Sil Taylor, didn't want me to sing it neither. But a night, this is Dr. William coming to them. And this is Christo was the MC. And they announced me with him. You know the answer. That was the song, next song I sing with it. You know the answer. And they tell Christo to announce me with that. I tell him, announce me with holy pussy. And them tell him to announce me with this. You know the answer. So, me say nothing. When the music started to play, and it reached to the end for I to sing, I, I stand up. So I started to explain to the audience, I say, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but the MC make a mistake with the name of the song. The song I'm going to sing is Hold the Pussy. Mm. And from that, when I sing that song that night, I get, I had to sing it about twice, but three times I had to sing it, three times I had to sing that song. What's oh, amazing, it took you again all the way to the final. True. <laughs> True. Because at that time, they had a fella used to go wrong. Well, as this is Christo say, I use he as a figure. Right. And I use it as a pussy. I use him as a pussy cat, and I do it that my way. Did you hear about the thief in pussy? Kept the hole up in Sandy Grandy. You can't cook and live it at all. That pussy care does make your ball. Is one way to get a relief. So they plan one night to capture the thief. As he crawl in by my neighbor's son. And the boys, the pussy the cats start to run. They're running him. Holy pussy, holy pussy, holy pussy, pussy, pussy cat. cat. If you see him. Holy pussy, holy pussy, holy pussy, pussy cat. cat. Pussy running. Holy pussy, <laughs> holy pussy, holy pussy cat. Holy pussy, holy pussy, holy pussy cat. Nobody didn't know is a pussy cat who thief in so. So they send on to the CID for Barros, Rani, Bob, and Monsiki. But the CID men tell them flat it's not a human friend, it's a cat. They couldn't believe the police was right until they jammed the pussy that night. They're running him. Hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy cat. If you see him, hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy cat. Pussy running. Hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy cat. Hold the pussy, hold the pussy, hold the pussy cat. If you see people run out the house with knife and bull pistol, a fella they call him giveaway. Have a battle just like Massive. He's a plaguey long time of planning. Who whenever I catch him, the man vex till I get red. If I hold a pussy tonight, he dead, they're running him. Hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy cat. If you see him, hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy cat. Pussy running. Hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy cat. Hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy, hold it, pussy cat. And I'm coming to one of my favorites now, Kokioko. Well, here what happened. I was, it have a fella they call 
Oh, the Calypso, the name is Dino, Spitfire, telling me that he went to St. Vincent, now my mother from St. Vincent. And when they want to grind cocoa in St. Vincent, they used to grind cocoa with their foot. Everybody take off the shoes and wash their foot and they put around a cocoa and they start to sing this song. I said, what song they started to sing? And he started to sing and say this was it, this was the Vincentian twang. And the, the, the Vincentian song for grinding cocoa. What's the name of the song? He said, man in kaka crew, koki yoko, koki yoko. And I and I afraid that. So I use it in my version. I say, well, it, and that time, all the Calypso, and it is from here. But over there, they was trying to sing Calypso, so this was the action. I'll refresh our minds. Last Calypso season, Lord Blakey went to St. Vincent. Last Calypso season, Lord Blakey went to St. Vincent. So they had a competition to crown the King Calypsonian. When they crown the Calypso King, this is the song that the fella sing, and he cry out, Man in Kaka Crew, Koki Yoko, Koki Yoko, Koki Yoko. Well, that was my version. Man in Kaka Crew, Koki Yoko, Koki Yoko. Wake up, girl, and put on your frack. Wake up, girl, you know, hey, the cock. Wake up, girl, and come out, we go. A man in Kaka Crew. Well, in St. Vincent, there is a cock used to wake them in the morning. Six o'clock. So that's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another calypso that stands out in my mind was the year that Sparrow lost to Dougla, and you made a calypso called Sparrow Loss. Tell us about that. You know, it's a funny thing, but I was in the Savannah that year, and he sang on Dougla, and I sat around and I said, why are you singing on the man? The man is a calypso like yourself. But when Bomber come and win him now, I was, that was my time. The Calypso had gone. What a tragic moment. When he recover, he start a ball. When he go this is decision, he get giddy, faint and fall. Was the competition for the Calypso King. You know the ball first Grenadians, Sparrow really thought he'd win. <laughs> I could talk because I ain't care. He get a lick in fear. Was up in Savannah, he get leaks by the mighty bomber. Who wasn't there could have hear, and who was there could have see. So he could walk about no one tell the public again, they rub him with me. Yeah. <laughs> you have to take that. Eh? But the part of the Calypso I like is um, this part. Um, he shouldn't get on so. Mama, you sparrow start to cry. It's I should I be angry, and friends, I won't tell you why. Like Trinidad, I've no Calypsonian. A vex still a blue man, I turn back red. They take the crown from one Grenadian and put it on the next one head. But my Grenadian, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> it's a kind of mama guy thing I make in joke, but they had to take that. Eh? All of us is friends, and I, I find everybody should take the little mama guy. <laughs> now, your career started in the 50s 1954. and 54. Oh, now, I remember, I think it was early 70s, around 73, there was a controversy where you and Kitch decided you're not going to the Savannah. Can you recall that year? Yes, I can't remember what song I sing, but what happened? I noticed that the, the CD, that time was CDC, not CNC. NCC. Not NCC, sorry. Was CDC, Carnival Development Committee. They want to pick who they want. But they used to have me, Bomber, and Killer picking the Calypsonian. And I find that wasn't right. You understand? So. You refuse to? Yes, I refuse. I say, look, me ain't going nowhere. I done with that. Give them younger fellas a chance. Records show that the last year that you made it to the finals of the Dimashka was 1976. Can you tell us, shed some light on that? Boy, I can't. What is this thing that year? What did this I can't remember the, what the, what is this thing that year at all? You know, I can't remember. All right, I want you to tell me now, if in retrospect, looking back at your Calypso career. 
from the years that you sang with Sparrow's Tent and then the year when you opened your own Victory Calypso Tent. Tell us about those years. Oh, well, um, I think, I think I had the people under control because um, I was a laughing Calypsonian and I make fun all the time with the audience because I figured that if a fellow leave his home to come out to listen to Calypso, he come to enjoy himself or to ease off some of the worries, if he have any, at his home to come to relax in it. And so when I sing, I make a fun of it. I make you laugh because this is what my head, this is what my head in Calypso to make the man who come to the tent enjoy himself. A lot of the Calypsonians took credit you as a person who gave them a break, people like Rio, and um, I remember Valentino sang at the Victory Tent also, and I remember you singing as many as four tunes on a night when the crowd wanted you. Yeah, if I give a joke, they may sound like, I even give Sparrow the break. That time they had Dirty Jim in Sauke, and the two people was running Dirty Jim was DC Sagalba and Skipper. Skipper is in some way in St. Croix now. And I carry Sparrow there. And I say, I, the, I call them, me and Sparrow coming up the Isle Center aisle. And when the two of them reached me close, we reached close to one another, I say, I'm here now. There's a young Calypsonian, you know, he want to get in the tent to sing. And Skipper turned to me and say, I'm the tent full. And he and the sea circle, but turn away. And keep walking back up the center parts. So when they reach about, 15 yards away from me, I turn and say, I'm Sagalba. He is a Grenadian like you, you know. And he come back to Baba, walk back down and say, I'm point to Sparrow and say, you singing, come later. You hear that? Mm -hmm. You hear that? Do you still compose calypsos? All the time. The last calypso I compose is a, a calypso I, I, I do a, last week um, because um, I figure that Sunday night that competition they had Sunday night wasn't right they didn't judge it right although they give the boss because I said Sparrow is the boss I said that but I find they didn't do it right so I compose a calypso on it so you look forward to that in 93 then you will get that in 93 definitely because I, I definitely I want to sing either with I would like to sing with Kajina or Shadow. Any one of them two tents, because there's four new tents going to open this season. I see it in the papers. And you have to be in one. I have to be in one. Looking back on your career, what has been the high point or your finest moment? The first year. 1954. <laughs> because here, yeah. for I to go on that stage, it's why I started drinking, drink alcohol. Because if I had to go on that stage, I was so scared. This is spoiler. Pour a drink in a glass. That tall and says, take a drink. And this is the only how I could have sing to the public. I have to mix up my head to sing. To get in the right mood. To get in the right, that's right, that's the word. <laughs> to get in the right mood to sing to the audience. I warn in everybody. So listen to Lord Blakey. Suknia start back again. From my arrow to Port of Spain. I warn in all bachelor women to be careful of them. I nearly die with fright. They catch one sucking me neighbor last night. She start bawling. Murder police. Me neighbor start bawling. Murder police. Everyone came running. Murder police, bring the barrel attack. Neighbor, all you come here quick, look a hole as you come here. After the back and all over, I went next door by my neighbor. She started to explain, neighbor Blakey, I was feeling shame. Cause I had on a short merino, and I forgot to lock me door. He crawled in and hold up me two foot so. And away the Sukiya go, the start falling. <laughs> Welcome back to Calypso Showcase. Well, you know, one thing is missing from that video. We couldn't present you 
Lord Blakey the way he used to be. But we kept digging and we found this little something from 1981. Lord Blakey singing a tune called Jubal Se. A long time ago on the shelf I stay with my friends and family I cool in myself Don't know what I do them But they giving me problem They testing me faith So let me warn them before it's too late So I warn them I really don't want no trouble That's what you will say I see both my wife and children Every blessed day I taking things easy they keep on pushing me, I can't take no more. So if they tackle you, fall is war. <laughs> Tell a villain. Tell a villain. Tell a villain. Not too long ago, this happened. Friends at night, I weep. My deceased father, Kaye, come to me in my sleep. He tell me, Matt, take it easy. Son, don't take on nobody. But in your mind, stamp it out. You have a family to see about, so I warn them. I really don't want no trouble. That's what you will say. I see both my wife and children every blessed day. I take him things easy, but they keep on pushing me. When I can't take no more, tell them. I'll say it's war. Say, lo di doi. Debi libi libi tom tom tom. I leave and see Koro to them. I go on in the east. I planning to settle down, but still I can't live in peace. This I got to mention, day and night is for vocation. Look, no cause, no mess. Leave this sleeping tiger to rest, so I warn them. I really don't want no trouble, that's what you will say. I see both my wife and children every blessed day. Them who play in bosses, my recreation is horses. And me playing bad, but I could give them the hardest hard. <laughs> Yes, Blakey. That's your jogging memory. <laughs> Who is Jubal? Jubal is a fellow living in San Juan, El Chico side. His father, the name Taib, he used to sell ice right at the, in the crazy opposite the, um, the post office. Short gentleman, always very broad hearted. I know all you're going to say that a lie, but believe me, friends, I see this with me eye. I wouldn't lie for all you for no reason. Believe me, friends, I see this thing happen. Man, I live in home by my mother. She's two meat and she leave it there for my father. Take a heater and cover it down. That was my father, then when he come, a rat climb up and take down the iron and the cover and he gone down inside the meat. <laughs> He climb out and put back the iron and the cover the same way when he finish eat. Corning the bat went and bed as he finished. If a life and cut off my head, crossing the road for a towel to dry skin, a car bounce him and kill him dead. <laughs> the best part of this calypso is um, why, why, we, why people don't believe me at all. How you could say I lying from since a small? Well, all you will have to say that I lie. Anything happen, me not going to close my eye. But we on the on the wharf, some fellas gambling. Police make a raid, every man start running. One couldn't run, jump over Buddha's man. Police behind him, so he leave his shoes on the land. Here we happen. Swimming through the bookers, the police getting tired, so he started to talk to he. 
You could achieve all this trouble by letting me arrest you run home like everybody. Then what you think I'm doing, but you still following, is home I'm going, sir. The police say, don't talk stupidness. He say, Barsai from Grenada. That means he's swimming home. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Well, we have a little special. The guy who asked about the last verse in Maria, it's on cue. This thing in my mind, I want to say it all the time, is that thing that have me so. All over the night, she did wake me for spite for what I really don't know. And I can't make no fuss, cause it's my face go bust, so you see the position, friend. But the old people have a talk, they just say, the longest rope of fun and have me falling. Maria, girl, I love you so bad. Maria, if you leave me, no will be hard. Me granny, she turn wrong and tell me, Sao cafe kapui, he's all maka well winning. <laughs> <laughs> shell a long time I go down the shelf I stay with my friends and family I cool in myself don't know what I do them but they giving me problem they testing me faith so let me warn them before it's too late so I warn them I really don't want no trouble that's what you about say I see both my wife and children every blessed day I take in things easy they keep on pushing me, I can't take no more. So if they tackle to Bali's war. <laughs> they will be long. They will be long. They will be long. Not too long ago, this happened. Friends at night I weep. Me this is father, Kaye, come to me in my sleep. He tell me, Matt, take it easy. Son, don't take on nobody. But in your mind, stamp it out. You have a family to see about, so I warn them. I really don't want no trouble. That's what you will say. I see about me wife and children every blessed day. I take in things easy. But they keep on pushing me when I can't take no more. Tell them to Balsay's war. Say, lo di doi. Debi libi libi tom pom pom. 